Welcome to Building Your Network Marketing Business with Jim Rohn. Mr. Rohn has been hailed over the years as one of the most influential thinkers of our time, as well as a major influence to an entire generation of personal development trainers and speakers. Jim was described as a master motivator by Mark Victor Hansen, a national treasure by Vic Conant, one of the most profound thinkers and mind-expanding individuals of our time by Les Brown, and an extraordinary human being and mentor by Anthony Robbins. Jim Rohn shared his success philosophies and principles for over 46 years with more than 6,000 audiences and 4 million people worldwide. He focused on the fundamentals of human behavior that most affect personal and business performance and authored over 25 books, audio, and DVD programs. Now let the man who has influenced so many help you to invent your future. Here's Mr. Jim Rump. It is so much fun to travel the world, especially for me, farm boy from Idaho. I didn't have many skills when I first uh, awakened to the opportunity that, you know, you could work for pay. I knew how to milk cows, but, you know, that was about it and it didn't pay very well. But when I was introduced to network marketing, health and nutrition, a marketing system where I could start at the bottom, go to the top and start part time, it literally revolutionized and changed my life forever. I've never been the same. And a big share of my story now is sharing with people around the world this extraordinary opportunity. And then along with it, the philosophy that makes it work. Because you can have every technique in the world and the best product in the world, and you can have the finest support system in the world, but unless you have the philosophy that drives you to do the necessary things to make it work, then nothing works. So I like to talk about all the things that made it work for me and see if that might not be valuable for uh, someone else. So I want you to take some good notes. If you're ready to take notes, say, I'm ready. I like this crowd already. Treat me well, I might take you with me as my traveling audience. Now, here's the next key on being prepared for the next century, and that is your personal philosophy. At age 25, the things that so dramatically changed my life was number one, the discovery of a unique product that I could believe in. My, my mother taught nutrition and she taught good health, so I was the beneficiary of that. It came from my grandmother, my grandfather, passed it on to my mother, she taught it, passed it on to me. Uh, my father never had a major illness, lived to be 93. My mother extended her life, according to the doctor, at least 20 years. She should have died at least 20 years earlier than she did, simply because she stretched out those years by the study of good nutrition. I was an only child and mama studied and, you know, mixed up all that stuff back then. You know, she'd say, hey, me and Papa and her, she said, drink this stuff. If it don't kill us, I think it'll help, you know, and we're <laughs> gagging down this stuff. And mama taught all of that, but the payoff was so incredible. I passed it on to my two daughters. They've never been ill. They passed it on to their children, my grandchildren, that haven't been ill. I mean, the study of good nutrition, paying attention, and being involved in the industry you're in, it's one of the best. So, that's so important. Your personal philosophy, what you believe in, that's going to carry you into the next century. Let me give you now some of the early philosophies that changed my life forever. I heard one of them in my introduction. Some of these philosophies have lived with me now all of these years. I've passed them on and people have come back around saying, Mr. Rohn, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 35 years ago, I sat in your class and sat in your seminar and those early things that you taught, I've practiced it and I'm doing it. A man not long ago showed me notes he took 23 years ago. And then he had me sign those notes. He said, I've used these notes to develop my life, my personal life and my business life. And when he took those notes, he said, I was 18 years old. So it's incredible. I'm so thankful for all these years, but now I want to pass it along to you some of the philosophies that changed my life forever. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. ready. Here's the first one. Profits are better than wages. Once I understood that, I got rich. Profits are better than wages. Nobody taught me that in high school. I went to college for a year and a half and I never heard it. I'm 25 and broke. I'm not destitute. I'm broke. Too much month at the end of the money is broke. And I finally hear this philosophy, profits are better than wages. Now here's the phrase that goes with it. 
Wages make you a living, which is fine. Profits make you a fortune, which is super fine. And you can live both fine and super fine. You've now got the mechanism and the ways and means to do that. Profits are better than wages. Guess what? I taught this in Moscow when I was teaching capitalism. You know, the communists had it all wrong. They taught that capitalism was, you know, a big company that oppresses its workers. I mean, it was absolutely ridiculous. They had mentally lost it when they came up with this ridiculous philosophy. Uh, communism taught capital belongs to the state, not the people. And we taught all these years what? Capital belongs in the hands of the people, not the state. That's why, of course, kids should pay taxes, because they can be capitalists, and all capitalists should pay taxes. And it doesn't take much to start an enterprise that makes a profit. I teach kids how to have two bicycles, one to ride and one to rent. I mean, you know, how long does it take? How long does it take to make a profit? I mean, a little ingenuity and you're on your way. So profits are better than wages. Capitalism better than communism. Communism said people are too dumb and stupid to know what to do with capital. So you must take capital away from all the dumb, stupid people and give it to the all-wise, all-knowing state. And let the state run everything. I mean, that was communism. And they devastated every country they touched. I've been to East Germany. It's taking a trillion dollars just to clean up East Germany. They've already spent 500 billion, they got 500 billion more to go. I mean, every country they touched, and I've been in all of them, they devastated them all with their devastating philosophy. We teach capital belongs in the hands of the people. That's where the ingenuity is to bring goods and services to the marketplace. And I'm going to show you later the miracle of capitalism grassroots in America, which you're involved in. But once I understood this now, it was so incredible. Profits are better than wages. Now, when I first was recruited, I'm a distributor for this little product called Abunda Vida. And here's what my mentor said, Mr. Shelf. He said, Mr. Owen, you can start this miracle working business part time. You don't have to go full time, you can start part time. And he said, if you'll devote to start with, let's say 10, 12, 15 hours a week, where you'll start making a profit, here's what you can now say. I'm working full time on my job and part time on my fortune. Because profits lead to fortune. I got so excited about that philosophy. I'm working full time on my job, but now I'm working part time on my fortune. I found a way not only to make a living, you won't believe this, I found a way to make a fortune. <laughs> Can you imagine what that's like then to get up in the morning? To go to work on your fortune, not to go to work to pay the rent, which is okay, but a chance to go to work to make a fortune? And I said, right now I'm working part-time on my fortune and full-time on my job, but it won't be long until I'll be working full-time on my fortune. Can you imagine what life is going to be like? <laughs> now, here was my first goal when I started. And that was part-time, I wanted to equal on my profits part-time what I was earning on my full-time job. This is called the magic of part-time. It is so thrilling for people to start working the business part-time because now you can work on profits and it doesn't take very long if you'll really concentrate on those 10 12 15 hours a week it won't be long if you really do it right and learn some of the skills I'm going to talk about it won't be long until you can be earning as much part-time working on your fortune as you are full-time working on your job I did that in less than six months now I've got an incredible invitation I found a way part-time to work on my fortune and I'm making as much money at that as I am on my full-time job. Would you like to hear my story? Yeah. It was incredible. Now, here was my second goal. To make twice as much money part-time working on my fortune as I was working full-time on my job. And I reached that in less than a year. Making twice as much money part-time working on my fortune as I was full-time working on my job. Now I've got an incredible invitation that won't quit. I found a way through a unique opportunity to work part-time on my fortune 
And I'm now earning twice as much money as I am working full time on my job. Would you like to hear my story? Do you imagine anybody would say, no, I don't care to hear your story? No. Everybody I said that to said, wow, yes, what are you doing? I said, I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you. Now, when I started making twice as much money part time as full time, here's, here's my dilemma. I didn't want to go full time. And why not go full time? And the reason was because I didn't want to give up my electrifying story. <laughs> right? It was so powerful, nobody could resist the invitation to at least take a look. I didn't want to give it up. And I hung on for I don't know how long until it was, you know, almost insane. And then finally, finally, reluctantly, I gave up my full-time job. But now, but now you can imagine the thrill and excitement of going to work full time on my fortune. It was incredible. But I want you to jot down the magic of part time. What does it take to really change a person's lifestyle? Not very much. An extra thousand a month, I'm telling you, will drastically change most American families' lifestyle. And that's why part-time is so valuable because it very quickly changes a person's lifestyle. And here's what the change in lifestyle does. It's a great recruiting tool. One of the greatest recruiting attractions is the money you make part-time. Somebody said, you've been on three vacations this year? Says, yes, I got this little part-time thing going. Says, what's that? <laughs> you bought two new cars, one for you and one for her. How did you do that? Said, I got this little part-time thing going. You, your kids have got all these new clothes? Yes. All this stuff is happening? What is it? An extra thousand a month. See, a thousand a month full-time, nobody wants to hear your story. A thousand a month part-time that starts to change your lifestyle, everybody wants to hear your story. So the key is part-time. The magic and the attraction of part-time gives you a classic invitation for somebody to listen to what you're doing that's changing your life. And it's not just necessarily the money that changes your life. It's what you do with the money. It's the change of lifestyle. So part-time helps to change lifestyle, which gives you a classic invitation to look at what you're doing. That's how I started in network marketing, age 25. Wow, these philosophies changed my life. I wish I would have learned them in high school. In high school, if they would have offered wealth one, wealth two, I'd have taken both classes. I wouldn't have waited until I was 25 and broke. Here's the next one. Philosophy that helped change my life. It's not what happens that determines your life future. It's not what happens that determines your life future. It's what you do about what happens. All of us are in like a little sailboat. And it's not the blowing of the wind that determines your destination. It's the set of the sail. So jot this phrase down. It's one of the best to understand. Kids need to understand it. The same wind blows on us all. The same wind blows on us all. The wind of disaster, the wind of opportunity, the wind of change. The wind when it's upside down, the wind when it's favorable and unfavorable. The same wind blows on us all. The economic wind, the social wind, the political wind. The same wind blows on everybody. The difference in where you arrive in one year, three years, five years, the difference in arrival is not the blowing of the wind, but the set of the sail. And that's what learning is all about, to set a better sail this year than last year. To set a better sail. The first six years of my economic life, I wound up broke. Second six years, I wound up rich. You say, well, the Democrats must have finally gotten power. No, no, no. It was not a political change. Here's what changed the second six years of my economic life. It was my philosophy that changed. The set of the sale of better thinking, correcting the errors of the past and picking up new disciplines for the future. That's all I had to do at the end of the first six. Correct the errors of the past and then pick up some new disciplines for the future. And my total life changed. The second six years was totally different than the first six of my working life. And guess who can do that? Anybody. Now, you can keep on the same path for the next couple of years as you have the past two. But if you wish to, if you wish to, 
And maybe everything's okay for you and you don't need to. But if you need to make some changes, I'm telling you, you can start doing it today so that the next two years will be drastically different than the last two. And anybody who wishes to do that can. And you can do it between ages 40 and 43. You can do it between ages 13 and 50. You can do it between ages 60 and 62. Any two years, any five years that you wish to drastically change from the previous five, you can do it. If you wish to. Now, this, is not, this, is, this isn't written. This is not a law. Here's what it's called. Opportunity. But if you don't know you can change, if you don't know you can drastically change your income, change your future, change your health, change your marriage, change everything. If you don't know that, some people then go year after year after year after year not making much change simply because they, they didn't get to the class. They never read the book. They never went to the seminar. They never made the discovery. They didn't seek for the knowledge of how could I make my life better. And if you just rock along, I'm telling you it's okay. Anybody can live any way they choose, but I'm here to tell all of you that if you wish to, it's possible to make the next three years totally different than the last three. And all you have to do is just a few things. So if you got that one now, it's not the blowing of the wind that determines your income. It's not the blowing of the wind that determines your fortune. It's the set of the same. And that's why we gathered here today. Maybe I've got some ideas that'll help you with a couple of little things about setting the sail of your thinking that might drastically give you multiplied more benefit the next three years than you've gotten in the last three. So it's not what happens. What happens happens to everybody. Chevron years ago brought me in to talk to management. They said, Mr. Owen, you travel around the world and you're fairly knowledgeable. What do you think the next 10 years are going to be like? I said, gentlemen, I can tell you, I do know the right people. So they all leaned forward and listened carefully. And I said, gentlemen, the next 10 years are going to be about like the last 10. <laughs> the next season after fall is, well, I promise you that's not going to change. After day comes, night, I promise you that's not going to change. Here's how the last 6,000 years reads, if you want to make a note of Jim Rohn's vision of history the last 6,000 years. Here's how it reads, opportunity mixed with difficulty. And if we're around another 6,000 years, it's going to read like that looks like for the next 6,000 years. Opportunity mixed with difficulty. Now, sometimes there seems to be more opportunity than difficulty, and then sometimes there seems to be more difficulty than opportunity, but the mix isn't going to change. After expansion comes recession. But after recession comes expansion. Not to think so, see, is naive. And once you've got just a little of this stuff settled, then you know exactly what to do. You know exactly what to anticipate so you can be ready. Now, here's the next one, and I heard it in my invitation. Here's what it says. For things to change, you have to change. I was hoping the government would change and taxes would change and economics would change and my boss would change and be more generous. I wished for everything to change and my teacher said, no, Mr. Owen, for things to change for you, you have to change. Don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. Once I understood this, this altered the course of my life. Don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. And here's the big one. Don't wish for less problems, wish for more skills. You don't need less problems. You simply need more skills. Don't wish for less challenge. Wish for more wisdom. Accept the challenge because you can't grow without a challenge. You can't get rich without a challenge. You can't fly without gravity. You have to understand the challenge. But that's the key is to now develop wisdom to overcome the challenge. Don't wish for less challenge but more wisdom. And then here's one more philosophy to help change my life forever. You can do the most remarkable things no matter what happens. Humans can do the most remarkable things no matter what happens. Philosophies that changed my life. Here's one of the big philosophies I learned in network marketing. It's called the law of averages. If you do something often enough, a ratio will appear. Key phrase, if you do something often enough, a ratio will appear. It's amazing, it's uncanny. In baseball, we call it batting average. 
If you talk to 10 people, one says yes. Now the ratio has begun. One out of 10. Talk to 10, get one. Here's something interesting about the law of averages. Once it starts, it tends to continue. This is colossal information. Once a ratio starts, it tends to continue. If you talk to 10 and get one, sure enough, chances are excellent. If you talk to 10 more, you'll get another one. Talk to 10 more, you'll get another one. Now you can compete. If you can only get one out of 10, you can compete, even with somebody that can get nine out of 10. If you've been here a long time, you can get nine out of 10. I just joined, I can only get one out of 10. If we have a 30-day contest, I will beat you. Say, well, how could you beat me? Here's why. During that 30 days, you talk to 10 and get nine. I talk to 100 and get 10. I beat you. <laughs> Isn't that clever? This is clever stuff. And I do it for two reasons. I sincerely wish to win. But I do it for another very sincere reason. I wish for you to lose. <laughs> and that's noble on my part. Here's why it's noble. You learn more by losing than you do by winning. So I wish to give you that experience. Now here's how I do it once I understand uh, the law of averages. When I'm new, I make up in numbers what I lack in skill. I make up in numbers what I lack in skill. Now who can do that? Anybody that's ambitious. Anybody with a little ingenuity. Anybody. Doesn't matter. Now here's one more. The law of averages can be increased. You get one out of 10, talk to 10, get another one. Talk to 10, get another one. The fourth time you talk to 10, you get two. Why would the fourth time you talk to 10, you get two instead of one? You're getting better. You're getting better. And who can get better? Anybody. Talk to 10, get two. Talk to 10, get two. Finally, talk to 10, get three. I finally got up to about three. Now, it takes more than a genius to go past like three or four. But three will do. If you bat 300 in baseball, they pay you $4 million a year, which means you're out seven times out of 10. Seven times out of 10, out. Make $4 million a year. Are you ready for that? So this works so well now in your business. Just jot the phrase down. You don't have to bat a thousand. You don't have to bat a thousand to make big money. One out of 10 is fine. Two out of 10 is terrific. Three out of 10 is fabulous. Some particular incredible genius might get four out of 10, but three out of 10 is sufficient to make you rich beyond your wildest imagination. This is how I went after my friends, neighbors, and relatives when I first started recruiting. I said, look, I've got a new business and I'm getting about three out of 10 to join. And I don't mind you, just come to the meeting and be one of the seven. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You're my friend, you'll do me a favor. And so it's not important to me that you like it. It's not important to me that you join. It's certainly not important to me that you buy. It's just important to me that you listen. One of the reasons though I want you to hear the story is because a year from now, if I'm doing well, I don't want you to say, how come you never picked up the phone a year ago? I never got a letter, never got a call. You call me a friend? You're making all this money? You never picked up the phone. So I don't want that to happen. So for two reasons, I want you to see what I'm doing. So that a year from now, if I'm doing well, I can say, you know, I gave you the opportunity. But also, just as a favor, come and be one of the seven. It doesn't matter to me if you buy or join. But I need 10 to get three. And if you're one of the three, wonderful. If you're not, wonderful. It doesn't, it might matter to you. It might matter to you, but it doesn't matter to me. Now, it matters to me because we're friends, but it doesn't matter in terms of my averages. So if you decide to get rich, just learn the law of averages. You're off and running. Now, here's the second law that changed my life forever in network marketing. I learned the law of sowing and reaping. And in the law of sowing and reaping is also the story of the law of averages. Jot this down. The story of the sower 
comes from the Bible. I'm an amateur on the Bible, but this is such a useful story. Here's what the story says. And take the notes because the drama's in the details. The sower was ambitious. Evidently, he was ambitious. When you read the whole story, you'll conclude, yes, this was an ambitious sower. Here was number two. He had excellent seed. The sower who sowed the seed had excellent seed. And the excellent seed can be an excellent opportunity, an excellent product, an excellent story. So we've got an ambitious sower with excellent seed. But now here's the rest of the details of the story for your information, for the drama of your life, so you can understand things better. Learning some of this is how I got rich by age 31. Okay. Number one, it says the sower goes out to sow the seed, but the first part of the seed falls by the wayside and the birds get it. So jot this down. The birds are going to get some of the seed. The birds are going to get some of the seed. Now you say, well, Mr. Arnold, what does that mean? Well, I invite John to come to a meeting. He said he'd be there Tuesday night. Tuesday night I show up, John isn't there. I say, John, I wonder why John didn't make it. Now I know the answer. The birds. <laughs> the birds. John had this great idea of coming to the meeting to look at an opportunity. And somebody stole it and said, you're not going to go see network marketing and he says well maybe not so have you jotted that down now the birds are going to get some now when the birds get some you've got two options number one is to chase birds <laughs> and say well let me get a hold of the person that talked him out of coming to the meeting i'll tear him a new page but i wouldn't do this Here's what happens if you go chasing birds. You leave the field. If you go chasing birds now, you leave the field, which is going to distract from your future, not add. So you can't chase birds and try to straighten this stuff out. Here's what it is. It's just one of those things. And here's the best comment when things are a little disappointing. Isn't that interesting? You just, you just have to say, I thought, sure, he would be there. He promised me. He promised me, but I know it was the birds. And you just have to say, isn't that interesting? Now, here's the rest of the story. It says, the sower kept on sowing. See, that was the secret to his success. He kept on sowing. And if you keep sowing, you can sow more than the birds can get because there aren't enough birds. If you keep sowing, there are some birds, but there's not enough because the law of averages will work for you. My mentor taught me, he said, you know, Mr. Owen, there's only nine or ten real nasty, miserable people in the whole world. Now, he says they move around a lot, you know, and you're liable to... <laughs> You'll bump into one once in a while. But when you bump into one, you say, there's only nine more like you. I can handle that in the whole world. Okay. Now, here's what else it says. The sower now keeps sowing the seed. Now the seed falls, the story says on rocky ground where the soil is shallow. And the rocky ground where the soil is shallow is not of your making. Because you had excellent seed and you were an ambitious sower. So the rocky ground where the soil is shallow is not of your making. But here's what it says what happened. This time, the little seed that falls in the ground starts to grow. And the little plant starts to grow. But the first hot day, it withers and dies. It does. Not an easy thing to watch. I finally get John started. Sure enough, three or four days later, somebody says, boo, and he goes. <laughs> He's gone. Doesn't show up at the second meeting. And I say, I thought, sure, John would last a week. What happened? Jot this down. The hot weather is going to get some. And this is not of your making. Here's what you must say when that happens. Isn't that interesting? Wow. What can you do? The answer is nothing. You say, well, I'm going to try to change this. I wouldn't take that class. You know, the sun comes up in the east. Somebody says, why is that? I wouldn't spend much time on that. Just, <laughs> just let that happen. 
Don't go for this why, why, why stuff. I'm giving you the answers here. The answers is in, is in the structure and the consequences and in the deal. The answer is in the deal. Anything beyond that is not worth study. You say, well, how come some just last a little while? I wouldn't sign up for that class. Here's the answer. Some don't stay. You just, you just have to jot that down. And when some leaves, you say, that's one of those that don't stay. You just, you, now you know what category to put them in. And you can't solve this now. You can't, it's like rearranging the seasons. You can't fool with that. All you can do is cooperate with the way things are set up. I didn't set it up. You say, well, it shouldn't be this way. Well, when you get your own planet, you can rearrange this whole deal. But on this planet, you're a guest. You've got to take it as it comes. Now, here was the secret to the ambitious sower with good seed. It said he kept on sowing. Now, here's what he had to do to keep on sowing. He had to discipline his disappointment. This is a key phrase now to use the rest of your life. You must learn to discipline your disappointment because you didn't set up the setup and some are not going to stay and that is not of your making. Now, if you made gross errors and you ran them off, see, that'd be different. Now, you're responsible for that. But if it's in the normal course of things, this is the way things are. Now, here's what it says. The sower keeps on sowing. Now it says the seed falls on thorny ground. And somebody says, well, how much of this do you have to go through? Well, hang on. It's, it's not the end of the story now. Now the little seed falls on thorny ground. And now the little plant starts to grow again. But as the little plant starts to grow, the thorns choke it to death. And it dies. So jot this down. The thorns are going to get some. And that's not of your making. And what are these thorns? The story even called these little thorns, little cares, little distractions, little somethings. Who knows what all they are? I say, John, we had a meeting last night. You weren't here. John says, well, I can't make every meeting. I say, why not? You're part time. He said, well, the screen door came off the hinges. And you just can't let your house fall apart. You've got to take some time and fix things up. And I can hear the thorns going, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> He says some extra trash had piled up in the garage. You can't let mountains of trash take over. You've got to keep your trash hauled out. Said, uh. <laughs> People who let little things cheat them out of big opportunities. People who let little things cheat them out of big opportunities. And you feel almost helpless. What could I do about that? And that's nothing. And you say, well, why is this? I'm asking you not to sign up for that class. Don't sign up for these why is this class. It's just the way it is. Like winter following fall and spring following winter. So if you got that, the thorns are going to get some. But now here's the good news. Let's read the rest of the story now quickly. The sower now what? Keeps on sowing the seed, keeps on sharing the story, keeps on giving an invitation. Yes, the invitation can be more powerful for me as it was one year later than it was the first, the first month. Because now I'm saying I'm making twice as much money part-time as I'm making on my full-time job. Yes, the story can be more powerful, but the law of average is still going to work. But now here's what the story said. Finally, the seed falls on good ground. Finally, the seed falls on good ground. Now, put this in parenthesis. It always will. If you keep sowing. If you share a good idea long enough, it will fall on good people. But now here's the rest of that story. Some of the good ground did 30%. And some of the good ground did 60%. And some of the good ground did 100%. You say, well, why the difference in numbers? I wouldn't sign up for that class. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Have I said that often enough now? Don't register for that class. It's just the way it is. Now, I tried to get the 30s to do 60. Found out it was more than I could handle. I used to say, I'll make them successful if it kills me. I almost died. So, no, you can't do that. Here's what you do. Let the 30s do 30 to the best of their ability and keep doing 30. 
because that's how they build their lifestyle and get what they want out of life. And let the 60s do 60 and let the 100s do 100s. Now, how can you get some to do 100%? You got to go through all these experiences and you got to talk to all these people. Let me quickly give you now a list of the skills that changed my life forever. Developing a new philosophy that I could do it. In my network marketing experience now led me to developing new skills. Right, I knew how to milk cows, but it didn't pay well. Here's the first skill I learned that changed my life. Getting a customer. Making a sale. And of course, sales for you is easy, right? Because it's not technical, right? The technical is all taken care of. You simply represent your product. If you share a unique product, talk about its merits, persuade someone that it's the best, they agree to buy, that's the simple art of sales. But in your business, here's what it's more like, sharing. Because using the product yourself, gathering some testimonials, you simply share that. So we're not talking like high-powered spacecraft technical skills here. It's simply sharing something you've discovered with someone else and doing it well enough to where they agree they would like to participate. Now here's what happened when I learned sales. It multiplied my income by five. Now it didn't take that much because I wasn't doing that well in farm country, but it did multiply my income by five. Sales, getting customers, laying that incredible foundation for an entrepreneurial career. So now I've got two skills, milking cows and making sales. Here's the next one I learned that changed me forever. And that's recruiting, introducing the business opportunity to new people, learning how to give a good invitation, learning how to give two kinds of presentation, formal and informal. And the third part of recruiting, of course, is following up. Once you start a new life, now you've got to take care of it, like a new mother would take care of her baby. You don't start a new life and abandon it. You start a new life and nourish it like a mother and protect it like a father. You gotta be mo both mother and father to a new person. Nourishment, ideas like a mother. Protection, help defend your new life against the encroachment of outside voices that would try to talk them out of it. So you gotta be mother and father in this art of recruiting. We call it being a sponsor. And being a sponsor is like being a bridge, helping somebody from darkness to light from skeptic to faith, from not knowing to knowing, from no confidence in themselves to starting to gain confidence. You're the bridge that helps people from the shadows to the sunlight. It's one of the most exciting positions to occupy in all of network marketing industry, is the bridge, helping people crossing the bridge, out from discouragement into recognition. Being this bridge, that's what the recruiting magic is all about. You've got the answers. They've been looking for the answers. You've got the answers. And you help them cross this bridge. You see something in them before they can see it in themselves. You assure them that it's possible to be more than they are. Therefore, they can earn more than they've got, have more than they possess. This is one of the great arts in the world. And here's what's exciting about this art. It pays big money. Because now you operate a unique philosophy taught first in the Bible, John Kennedy taught it in his inaugural speech. Zig Ziglar's got one of the best ways to put it. And that's the secret to wealth. The secret to wealth and fortune. First taught in the Bible. Because the question was asked, how can we achieve greatness? Great wealth, great power, great influence, great recognition, great self-esteem. How can we achieve greatness? The master teacher was asked. And here was his formula for achieving personal greatness. He said, Find a way to serve the many, for service to many leads to greatness, for those that are interested. Some people aren't interested, but for those that are, service to many leads to greatness. Someone says, well, the best I can do is just take care of myself, which is okay, but it doesn't lead to greatness. Someone says, I got enough bills of my own, I can't worry about someone else's bills. That's okay, but it doesn't lead to greatness. Greatness is helping people pay their bills. You forget about yours. Because if you help enough people pay theirs, yours disappear. Help people with problems. Your problems disappear. 
The key to greatness, the master teacher taught, is finding a way. Now, a lot of people would like to serve many people, but they don't have a way. And what's exciting about you and your business is you've now got the way. Whether you use it or not, it's up to you. Whether you cash it in or not, it's up to you. Whether you make a fortune or just a little, that's all up to you. Each person's ambition, it's called the same marketing. The same product, the products are the same for everybody here. The marketing system is the same. The difference is each person's philosophy and each person's individual ambition. But whatever your ambitions are, now you've got the ways and means. And here's what you've got the ways and means to do. Serve as many people as you would like. Now here's what's exciting about recruiting. With what you're involved in here, you can directly and indirectly affect the lives of dozens of people. Some of you are going to directly and indirectly affect the lives of hundreds of people. And some of you, if you wish, can directly and indirectly affect the lives of thousands of people. And the pay is accordingly. If you affect a few, you earn that pay. If you affect the many, you earn that pay. But the secret is found in the Bible. Service to many leads to greatness. Now, John Kennedy said it in his inaugural speech. Here's what he said. Don't ask. Don't we wish that was the current political philosophy? Where is John Kennedy and his philosophy? John Kennedy said, don't ask. That's important if you understand philosophy. He said, don't ask what the people can do for you. Don't ask what the country can do for you. Don't ask what the government can do for you. That's not how you get rich. That's not how you have high self-esteem. That's not how you get trophies to put on the mantle above the fireplace. Asking what the people can do for you. Don't ask, he said, what the people can do for you. But ask, what could I do for my country? And the country means the people. What could I do for the people? I want trophies. I want recognition. I want high self-esteem. I would even like, like a chance to make a fortune. John Kennedy says it's easy. Don't ask what the people can do for you. But ask, what could I do for the people? Could I directly and indirectly serve many? in my country. And now that you are participating in this program, the answer is yes. Now, Zig probably said it best. Zig's got some great stuff. Zig and I have been good friends for a lot of years. Zig says money isn't everything, but it ranks right up there with oxygen. <laughs> Zig, you're right. Zig says, my dentist told me, Zig, only floss the teeth you want to keep. You know? Forget the rest. But here, Zig is famous for this now. This is one of Zig's philosophies, and it goes right along with the other two, the Bible and John Kennedy. Here's what Zig says. If you help enough people get what they want, you can have everything you want. If you help enough people get what they want, you can have everything you want. Now, wanting everything you want, we call that self-interest. But it's... It, it's okay to have self-interest if you do it in a positive way. By helping enough people get what they want, you can have everything you want. Now, you can accomplish all that by learning this next skill called recruiting. And I learned it, and it made me fortunes. So now I've got three skills, milking cows, making sales, and recruiting. Here's the next skill I learned that paid big money, organizing. Once you got a few, get them to work together, see, and that's magic. Getting people to work together is magic. Now, yes, it's challenging, like having some, you know, several in members of your family, getting them to work together is challenging, but it's magic. Getting husband and wife to work together is challenging, but it's magic when it happens. But everything magic is challenging. Just got to jot that down. Everything magic is challenging. But once you figure out the challenge and go for it, then the magic occurs. Let me tell you how magic how magical people working together is. Let me quote the Bible again. It says, if two or three agree on a common purpose, nothing is impossible. Just try that on for your mental size. If two or three agree on a common purpose, nothing's impossible. Everybody's looking for a challenge. Here's what I teach, especially the kids. Here's the best challenge in the world. Let's go do it. Not you go do it. Let's go do it. If two or three of us decide on a common purpose to do it, nothing's impossible. Incredible. Working together, organizing. Now, when everybody's an independent, now it's a little more challenging. Like having kids, they've each got their own opinions. They've each got their own uh, ambitions and desires. It, it's, it's challenging. You've got a variety. 
But that's what makes life the variety. And it is, in your business, it is challenging, getting people to work together. It's like herding cats. <laughs> you know, sheep are easy, sheep are easy, but you got to try cats, herding cats. <laughs> but if you can possibly get it done, the power is so immense when you get people to work together. Here's one of the powers of working together, shared testimonials. If I've got somebody new and you're there and I'm there, I give them my testimonial, you give your testimonial. Maybe what tips the scales in getting me a new person is not my testimonial, but my partner's testimonial. Somebody I'm working with. Their testimonial got them. Shared testimonials are so powerful. That's why getting working together is okay, is, is powerful. Now, working by yourself is okay. All this stuff is okay. Everybody needs to know, though, where are the advantages? And these are some of the advantages. I learned to organize, paid big money. Here's what I next learned to do, promote. Promotion now pays staggering money. Now the company comes up with what we call major promotions. Here's what you've got to come up with, the smaller promotions. The company comes up with major recognition. You've got to come up with small recognition for your people around you. The top five, the company's got top five. You've got your own top five in maybe two or three categories, top five, top five, top five. And those little recognitions, to reach certain levels in the company, you have to take major steps. But for you, recognition, let them take small steps. Here's one of the secrets of your kind of business. Rewarding people for small steps of progress. Rewarding people. Sometimes it's just recognition, handshake, pat on the back. Mary, you're doing a fabulous job. And you figure out what those recognitions are. Small steps of progress. Guess what promotion pays if you learn it well? Big money. Getting people to do something they wouldn't ordinarily do by themselves. People will do some unique things by themselves, but if you can figure out a way to say, Mary, if you do this and this, she says, well, I'll go for it. Now, she, she wouldn't have thought of that on her own. Here's what works magic. It's better than money. Money is a bit unimportant. Here's what's important. Ingenuity. The best place to wake up your ingenuity is what you're doing right now. Representing a unique product and getting customers, recruiting distributors and promoting and all this stuff. Ingenuity. Figuring out a way. If it doesn't work this way, we'll work another way. I used my ingenuity, made a fortune. My ingenuity worked on doing all these campaigns, the spring campaign and the summer campaign and the winter campaign. This week we're going to recruit school teachers. How many of you got? How many of you got? School, this is school teacher week, school teacher month. I'd pick out a little category and say, let's go for it. And it doesn't matter what it is, just dream up something so that somebody's got a little more objective to go for than just their own. Key phrase, we all need to belong to something bigger than ourselves. Because we furnish inspiration for what's bigger and the bigger furnishes inspiration for us. I learned promotion and it paid big money. Here's the next I learned, communication. How to conduct a meeting. I learned identification, logic and reason, attack and confess, solution. Simple deals on communication. Wasn't easy for me at first. I stood up to give my first presentation, my mind sat back down. <laughs> right? Y'all been through that? Opened my mouth, nothing came out for a while. But here's what I did. I did it again. Just jot that phrase down. I did it again. That's the secret to how I got here. 35, 40 years later, that's how I got here. I did it once, it was uncomfortable. That first presentation was so lousy, if I hadn't have been doing it, I'd have gone home. <laughs> it was not that good. But here's the secret to how I got here. I did it again, and then I did it again, and then I did it again, and I did it again. I remember when I first decided to be a little more animated, right? And walk out away from the podium, right? Get out from just behind the podium. So I got out there, and then I thought, how do you get back? <laughs> Whoa, I'm stranded out here. Remember those times, doing something for the first time? But you learn quickly in your business, right? In your business, a guy stands up to give his first testimonial, and he's so nervous, he forgets his own name, right? And 30 days later, he wants to give a three-hour testimonial, right? You hardly get him off the stage. So learn communication. How to affect other people with words. That's the greatest art in the world to learn. How to affect other people with words. Key phrase, don't be lazy in language. 
if you learn to use the gift of your own language wisely, it can make you a fortune and build an incredible life. Here's three other things I learned. One is to train. Training people how the business works. And then I've used another word called teach. Train and teach. And only to say this. Training people how the business works. Teaching is how life works. Because here's what all of us need for the 21st century. Business skills and life skills. The life skills are leadership skills. The life skills are learning how to set goals. Now here's the ultimate skill to learn that can transform your life and the life of whoever will listen. The ability to inspire. Inspire means help people to look up a little higher than where they are and wish they could get there and inspire them that it's possible. Here's how we inspire by our own testimonial. If I can do it, you can do it. Here's how else we inspire by others testimonial. If they can do it, Mary, you can do it. Getting people to see themselves better than they are. Getting people to see themselves richer than they are. Getting people to see themselves more capable next year than they are this year. Getting to see themselves in the future. To help both your kids and your people. Here's what you must learn to do. Number one, help people to see themselves as they are. If people have made mistakes, they got to know it. You can't go on making mistakes and hope to achieve. Mistakes have to be corrected. And you've got to do it with your children. Help them to see themselves as they are. If they've messed up, here's what you've got to say. You've messed up. But here's what's important as a parent. Don't leave them in the mess. Some parents, you know, tell their kids they've messed up and then they leave them in the mess. They don't paint a better picture. Here's what you could become with just a couple of more changes. Rather than this, here's what you could be. So we must help our children see themselves as they are. But here's the greatest gift to help our children see themselves better than they are. To transport them not only past to see their mistakes, but transport them to the future to see their opportunity. To see the person they can become. My mentor had that greatest gift to help me to see myself better than I was. At first it was difficult to see, then I started to believe, and that's how I got here today. He said, one of these days, Mr. Owen, you'll walk into a room full of people and you will hear some of them say, that's him. That's the famous man. I, I said, well, that could never happen to me. He said, trust me. If you keep working hard on the disciplines like you're doing right now, that'll happen. You'll walk into a room full of people and you'll hear one say, that's him. That's the famous man. He saw it and he tried to get me to see it. And now finally it's happened. I think when I walked in here today, I think I heard someone say, that's him. That's the famous man. <laughs> It happened for me. And if it can happen for me, it can happen for you. Just master these skills to inspire. Here's what else I, I learned, the skills of building an organization. Learn to work with the people who deserve it, not the people who need it. You must be like life itself. Respond to deserve, not to need. It doesn't say if you need, you will have a harvest. It doesn't say if you need a harvest, you'll have a harvest. It's not what it says. It says if you plant, chances are good you'll have a harvest. If you plant, you will reap. Not if you need, you will reap. So we must be like life itself. Respond to the people who deserve it by planting, by taking the first step. Even God himself says... If you move toward me, I'll move toward you. That's the condition. You move toward me, I'll move toward you, says the Almighty. Now, he could also say, you don't move, I don't move. You say, well, that's arbitrary. Well, when you're God, you can set it up that way. <laughs> now, learn to work with the people who deserve it, not the people who need it. Now, here's what's the next step. Teach people how to deserve your time. Teach people how to deserve your attention. Tease people how to deserve a phone call. Say, Mary, you just take this one step and I take two steps. You take two steps, I take five steps. You don't step, I don't step. But this isn't hard now. You step, I step. You respond, I respond. You try, I try. You make a call, I back you up. Right? Learn to teach people how to deserve your time and your attention. Next. I learned to work by group more than individual. Here's why. 80% of the people do 20% of the business. So 20% of the people you can work with individual, 80% you have to work with by group. But group is very powerful, less confrontational. 
Then here's what's important for all of you to learn as a sponsor, helping other people. You can help a thousand, but you can't carry three on your back. You can help a thousand, but you can't carry three on your back. And I'm sure all of you have already gotten that experience, even though you've been here a short time. Some people will try to get on your back. That's where we got that expression, get off. We're... That's where we got that. A guy discovered somebody on his back and said, what? I can't carry you, get. Now, if you're like some I see here, you know, six foot four and you weigh 300 pounds, you might carry one. And if, if you were really big enough, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or something, you might carry two, but you can't carry three. When babies are born, they were not designed just to be carried. Babies were not born to be carried all their life. Someday you got to try your legs. Someday you got to try your wings. Someday you got to try. Even if you fall down, you got to try because you can't just crawl around all your life. You can't be carried all your life. So as quickly as possible, you can help a thousand, but you can't carry three. Next, don't expect the pear tree to bear apples. I used to try to change everything. You can hang apples on a pear tree. I'm telling you, it won't help. You can put up a sign. This is an apple tree. Sure enough, come the season, pears. Here's what I learned. You cannot change people, but they can change themselves. You cannot change people, but they can change themselves. Incredible. Capital in your business isn't what matters. Okay, it's not the money that buys you a future. It's your skills that buy you a future. Money and no skills, and I'm telling you, you're still poor. Money and no ambition, where are you? Money and no courage, you're broke. A little bit of money and a whole lot of courage. That's all we need. I'm looking for people when I'm recruiting back in those days and the money didn't matter. What mattered to me was somebody's willingness, somebody's ingenuity, somebody's willingness to try, right? If they had a dollar to invest, that was plenty for me. A dollar and some ambition and I can show you how to get rich and it'll be one of the classic stories of the company. I go to recruit somebody, they say, I don't have any money. See, I've been looking for you for six months. <laughs> Let me show you how to do it without any money. Because here's the rules of capitalism. Jot this down. You can either buy and sell, or if you're in certain circumstances, you can sell and buy. If you've got ambition. Now, if you haven't got ambition, we can't cure that. And money won't cure lack of ambition. But if you've got a dollar and some ambition, I'll show you how to get rich. And even if you don't have a dollar, I'll show you how to get rich because you can sell and buy. Somebody says, as soon as the product arrives, I'll sell it. Then you don't understand. You don't understand the magic of fortune if you say, I have to wait till it gets here to sell it. And you probably don't understand the value of your own story. Once I understood that, I knew I was going to be wealthy. That's why right in the beginning, I started giving big tips. I knew I was going to be wealthy. I say, wow, this guy tips like a rich man. Say, That's right. He tips like a rich man. <laughs> Even in the beginning, I tipped like a rich man. Because I knew I was going to be rich. Wow. Isn't this fun? Yes. <laughs> Jot these phrases down as I close. Number one, the greatest value in life is not a bank account. The greatest value in life is not a car, a home to live in. The greatest value in life is this. Make a note, living a good life. In the midst of all of our achieving and recruiting and building and growing, helping other people, being a part of society and the country and the world, being all of this stuff. Here's what you must figure out all of your life, how to continually live a good life. So let me give you my short list. I'll cover the long list the next time I see you. Here's the short list on a good life. Number one, productivity. If you don't produce, you won't be happy. Here's number two, good friends. The greatest support system in the world is good friends. You got to work on that. Don't be careless here. Friends are those wonderful people who know all about you and still like you. Here's next, spirituality. I'm not asking you to be a believer. I am 
a believer that humans are more than an advanced form of the animal kingdom. I'm a believer that we're a special creation. I don't ask you to be a believer, but here's what I do ask. If you are a believer, here's what you must do. Study, practice, and teach. Whatever is valuable to you, study, practice, and teach. Repeat it after me now, again. Study, practice, and teach. Here's why. It builds the foundation that builds the country, that builds the nation, that helps us to compete among the nations of the world in the 21st century. And this is one of those subjects, to study, practice, and teach. Next, my parents taught. Don't miss anything. Don't miss the game. Don't miss the performance. Don't miss the show, the movie. Don't miss the words. We're all inspired by the words. Elton John says she lived her life like a candle in the wind, never knowing who to cling to when the rain set in. You can't miss those lyrics. You can't miss the music. You can't miss the song that nourish the soul. You can't describe how brief and fragile life is much better than that. George Harrison, one of the Beatles, sings, If not for you, the winter would hold no spring. Couldn't hear a robin sing. I just wouldn't have a clue if not for you. Wow. You've got to remember the words. The words that reflect the experience. Barbara Streisand sings, it used to be so natural to talk about forever, but used to be's don't count anymore. They just lay on the floor till we sweep them away. You don't sing me love songs, you don't say you need me, and you don't bring me flowers anymore. Illustrative of all of our experiences. Winston Churchill said, the truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it and ignorance may deride it, but in the end, there it is. You got to use that. Feast on someone else's comments. Because, see, you could stay up all night and not think of that. <laughs> I'm asking you to do your research. I'm asking you don't miss anything. Don't miss the play. When my father was 93, just before he died, if you would have called him at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, he wouldn't be home. He's at the rodeo. And he's watching the kids play softball. He's at church. He's watching the concert somewhere. Every night, my parents taught me that. Don't miss anything. Even little small things don't miss. The big things don't miss. Don't miss, don't miss. It's part of living a good life. Here's why. Jot this phrase down. It'll serve you well forever. If you live well, you will earn well. If you live well, it'll show up in the texture of your voice. If you live well, it'll show up in your face. If you live well, it'll show up in the magnetism of your personality. If you live well. So don't miss the nourishment of all the things around you that could help you live a good life. Next is the inner circle. Take care of them, they'll take care of you. Inspire them, they will inspire you. Nothing more valuable than the inner circle. That's where the power to conquer the world comes from, the inner circle. If a father walks out of the house and he can still all day long feel his daughter's kiss on his face, he's a powerful man. That nourishment of the inner circle is so incredible. If a husband walks out of the house and all day long he feels the imprint of his wife's arms around his body, he's invincible. Who can touch him? One person caring for another, the old prophet said, is the greatest of virtues. There's many virtues and values, but the greatest is love, one person caring for another. Better to live in a tent on the beach with someone you love than to live in a mansion by yourself. People caring for people. And especially that inner circle where the power is so magnificent that if you draw from it, if you nourish it, and then it nourishes you. Now, here's my last comment. Ask for God's help. We could all use a little help. But my whole seminar was what you can do. A man took a rock pile, turned it into a fabulous garden. Somebody came and saw it and said, you know, you and the good Lord have this fabulous garden here. The gardener said, I understand your point, but you should have seen it a few years ago when God had it all by himself. <laughs> <laughs> so we do play a part. So make this the last note now. We have a chance as human beings to participate in the miracle process. We have a chance as human beings to participate in the miracle process. And you can go do that every day as often as you wish, changing somebody's life. Rescuing somebody from oblivion, building an organization second to none so that your name will appear in many people's testimonial. And that's why I came today. 
so that by chance, I don't need the money. That's not why I'm here. I take the money, but I don't, I don't need the money. But here's why I'm here. By chance, perhaps, if I've come along at the right time, I don't know what time this is for you, but if I've come along at the right time, just maybe a week from now, a month from now, a year from now, five years from now, you might say, Jim Rohn came by and gave us a little piece of information that started me down the road. Here's what's happened to me. And my name might appear in your testimonial. Now, here's the drama as we finish. How many of you have my name in your notes? Here's the part of the drama then. I go with you. When we all leave here and the lights are out and the place is dark, I go with you because you've taken my notes and hopefully some of the spirit, some of the stuff I had besides just the notes. So I go with all of you. But here's the big drama. All of you go with me. See, that's so unbelievable. So as I leave here, I promise not to leave you behind. I will take you with me in my thoughts and in my heart. God bless. Thank you for listening to Building Your Network Marketing Business with Jim Rohn. To receive more information about Jim Rohn or his products, please visit his website at www.jimrohn.com. Thanks again for listening and make it your best year ever. Here's to your success.